<laughs> we're good we're All good right. so how long have you been playing uh tekken in general i've been playing since 2012. okay yeah who do you mean um heiachi mishima and um we've been going at it for since the i want to say i want to say i started with mishima's in 2012 and then at the beginning of tekken 7 is where i really decided i was gonna main heiachi and just use him and utilize him to the best of my ability okay um so how much of your how much kind of time would you say you spend gaming specifically in a week yeah okay if i had to like put a number down i'd it'd probably it. be <laughs> probably be like three four days a week a lot okay. a lot of hours like like i can play for like 10 hours a day nine hours a day usually like a five or six hour session is a good session for me but I, I can grind. I can I can play. I can play. All right. Is there any like particular structure that your practice follows, or is it more just I'm gonna go play people, net play for a while, or do you look for specific matchups to try and practice them? Uh, a little bit of both. I usually try to if I have something that is in my mind, I'm always thinking about the game. I'll write it down in my phone or something, and then I'll head to the lab and test it. And uh, then I'll just, I find myself circulating through all the characters and just practicing, practicing their weaknesses, matchups, and then I'll play. And it, it varies on what I want to do. I, I'm a lab junkie. I, I love the lab. I think Keiachi is a very misunderstood character. I think we, the, his full potential hasn't really been exposed. So I want to kind of showcase what he can do. So I've got a lot of interesting things that I know about this dude. All right, yeah. all right. Um, and what kind of controller you play on? I play on the Make Stick Pro by the IST Mall from Korea. It's yeah, I'm a uh, over there so I can have a look at it. Yeah, uh, it's my baby. This is we have been through years and years. This is actually a PS3 stick, that and is a uh, baby. yeah, so I, I um, it's got a Myeongchun Fanta lever, which is a Korean lever, and Japanese parts. And I recently installed it silent buttons because I play so late in the night. My parents can hear the clicking, <laughs> right? So they're like, can you chill? So I'm like, okay, how about this? Silent, silent. So yeah, I love this bad boy. My favorite, favorite, favorite stick of yeah. all time. Have you noticed any difference like in like in speed or, or quality? I mean, any difference other than just sound since installing the silent buttons? Yeah, it's, um, I just think there's, it's a perfect, I want to say mix between you know just just the Korean and then Japanese parts and then the weight of it. It's 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 quality. It's definitely quality. It's not something that, you know, if I'm gonna play Hayachi, I don't want to play on something that's kind of like low budget. We gotta we gotta, gotta we gotta up upgrade, to baby. Yeah, you gotta live up to the expectations, of course. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, so that's something you've been playing on for a long period of time. It's something you're obviously really comfortable with. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever dealt with any injuries before? No. Awesome. No. We'd like to yeah. keep it that way. Uh, <laughs> now, outside of your gaming time, um, I know you're still doing student stuff. Um, mm -hmm. What other stuff do you do in general to stay active, to fill your busy time? Um, well, I'm super into sports, so I love basketball, and uh, I like exercising. Okay. I like to go on runs or go to the gym, anything to like keep the keep the heart and the blood flowing. I'm very, okay. very, very adamant about that, and. Uh, Though my diet doesn't really showcase that, I I can, you know, I, I know what my body likes and what my body needs. I love water, so I'm very active. I want to be as healthy as possible because you need that. You need that. You need to be strong. You do. There's actually, there's, there's really awesome research that shows that not only um, does kind of being unhealthy and inactive have a detriment to your performance, being healthy and being active actively boost your performance, doesn't just put it at kind of like a neutral level. Um, you know, the kind of the biggest to me thing that, that people miss out on is just like all the benefits that sleep give you in terms of performance. Uh, now, I recognize you are a student and a gamer, so sleep is probably <laughs> at a premium for you. Uh, <laughs> totally understand and respect that. Um, now, I know with the whole quarantine situation happening, everybody's kind of work and activity and life has really been disrupted. Um, mm -hmm. How have you been staying active specifically during quarantine? Have you gone mostly to running? Have you done like indoor workouts? What's your thing? 
Mostly um, indoor and outside. Um, I've got a, a pretty spacious neighborhood where you can just run blocks, miles, whatever, and it's pretty safe. The community's safe. Or I like to do indoor workouts. Me and my sister, um, we do like these like 13 minute crunch times where you know you're just you're literally in bed and you're doing ab workouts. But it's like it's fun. You know, it's YouTube. It's timed. It's cool. Or I do what's called stair exercises. Um, and you just run up and down the stairs and, and you, you skip steps and you hop on the steps or you jump two steps and it's just, it's a workout, but it's cool. Absolutely it's is. cool. <laughs> it reminds me very much of doing stadium sprints in high school and college, which I don't. Oh, miss those all. are, yeah, no, 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 no. I know exactly. Yeah. Being on like basketball, we did it with bleachers. So, no. oh no, 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 thanks. <laughs> Somehow it's like marginally less bad when you make your own self do it as opposed to like your coach is making you do it. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to cheat a little, I'll be honest. <laughs> See, I have short legs, I can't cheat. Like, I oh. can't skip steps or anything. I like The farthest my leg is going is maybe two steps at a time. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little tall, I'm like 5'10", so it's, it kind of works. Yeah, so I, there's a reason I played soccer. Everybody's feet are the same height from the ground, and mm, I'm five That's fair, that's fair though, it works. You utilize those feet, exactly. I get it. <laughs> um, have you ever had any issues with like the like having to make your your controller or your seat or any of your setup space really fit you better because of your height? Mm, no, no. I think I'm pretty comfortable. I um I have I don't have like a gaming chair or anything, but I know back support, lumbar support, super important. So I have like cushion, very awesome. very. And and you know my parents asked me too. They're like, do we need to get you anything? Cause they know they know what I do. I'm That's like, awesome. no, I'm okay. I'm I'm comfy. I'm good. Sounds like they're invested too. Yeah. And for what it's worth, I also don't have a gaming chair. This is an office chair. Yeah. The reason that there is a, a random red cover on it is that my cat likes to eat leather for some reason. <laughs> and this makes her eat it slightly less. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, so it sounds like you're pretty active, you're pretty healthy. You've got a really good base understanding of like how your body works and what your body needs. Yeah. Um, do you do anything in particular when you're gaming in terms of warm-ups, breaks, or cool-downs, or kind of listen to your body in that front? Uh, um, I think I've started to incorporate stretching. Like I like to take breaks in between. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, but I think stretching is really important. You know, I like to stretch my limbs, stretch my, stretch my back for sure. But uh, if I, if I feel like I've been sitting for a long time, I'll just get up and just like take like a 10 minute stretch break or okay. something like that. Yeah, um, that's not a bad idea to, to build that in. And definitely uh, one of the things that you can do is make your rest breaks multi-purpose. Uh, so yeah, mm. absolutely, you can use them to stretch, you know, reset your posture, relax tight muscles. But you can also lose the, use them if like you're on kind of like a frustrated streak or if you've had like a couple losses in a row or you need to like reset your mentality. You can also use kind of that time to reset your, your mindset, reset your cognitive state as well as reset your physical state. Mm -hmm. um, when you compete, do you have like any like rituals, good luck, charms, anything like superstitions left over from basketball or not really? Not really. I guess I just, I watch a lot of gameplay. Um, you know, I have a couple of, well, actually more than a couple of like my favorite Heiachi players that I watch. So I kind of watch their, their games and their, what they do. And, and then, you know, once it's me and my competitor, my mind just kind of zones. Uh, I'm like quiet and focused. I don't hear any noise. I'm just, we're just playing and, and that's it. Man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Super. I really think like that kind of like that ability to really like focus in that way is definitely one of those things that traditional sports athletes get to bring over from from our background. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're used to, there's going to be noise, there's going to be chaos, yeah. and there's going to yeah. be like annoying referee shit going on. Just like, <laughs> it out and play. I don't, I don't hear it. It's true. I just, I don't hear it. It's That's crazy. Awesome. All right. So here's what I want to do then, because you clearly are already doing a lot of really good things. I don't want to disrupt the routine that you've got going. Um, mm -hmm. I want to just kind of fold some stuff into your gaming time um, that just really incorporates what you already know from traditional sports background um, and just brings it to a place that makes sense for you. Um, so I'm not going to design anything like huge or disruptive. Um, this is mostly just going to be like a quick little five minute warm up, five minute cool down, and then just some ideas that you can include during your breaks. Um, so kind of, I'm going to make one that's like an anti-tilt routine. So like for those times <laughs> when you are a little more stressed or frustrated, uh, and then I think rather than giving you a specific, you must do this on your breaks. I think I'm just going to give you a list of like structures or exercises you could use during your breaks. And then you pick from the list, like every, any given bake break, pick three of them and do them kind of deal. Uh, that way it's, 
you're listening to what your body needs because clearly you know your body pretty damn well at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and then what it needs, you're able to give it based off of like, oh yeah, this is the stretch that I can do for when my low back feels tight. This is the stretch that I can do for my hip flexor start feeling tight. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just having that kind of data in front of you as a reminder of, oh yeah, that's a thing that I can do is really helpful. The same way that like, you know, watching a combo that you haven't done in ages is like, oh yeah, that's a thing I can do. This is how it works for me and my street fighter playing all the time, mostly because I forget my combos about as soon as I learn them. It's all good. It's all good. It's all repetition. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So that covers my questions for you. What cool. questions do you have for me? So, um, oops, I just dropped my phone. I did, I did want to ask, is this something that um, a lot of people in the FGC know about? Like, I, I won't lie, when I saw a PT, I, I was like, I instantly knew it was like physical therapy, but I was like, how do we incorporate that? And of course, I'm very close with my parents, so I tell them everything. And they were like, oh, do you guys, do you need uh, the key to the gym or something? Do you need to like take the laptop with you? So how, how does this, you know, come about? How did this first start? So this actually started uh, because my friends got tired of me complaining about things. That's the short version of the story. <laughs> the long version of the story is I started in gaming doing in-game statistics for Dota 2, um, which mm. is a MOBA slash arts game. Um, and I'd, you know, do in-game stats. I'd do prep packets for casters. I'd go to tournaments and I'd see terrible ergonomics and I'd come home and I'd complain about them. My mm. friends told me to stop complaining or do something about it. So I went do something <laughs> about adoption. Um, so my background as a physical therapist is my undergraduate degree is in neuroscience and exercise science. So kind of the interaction between the brain and the body and how that really awesome. contributes to how you function, mm -hmm. um, how you perform in particular. Um, so I work in an outpatient orthopedics physical therapy clinic right now, um, where I actually don't treat very many gamers. Although the teenage patients that I have come in, when they hear me talk about gaming, like I actually know what I'm talking about, all of a sudden they listen to me a lot more when it comes to PT, <laughs> who knew? Um, but basically I found a way to marry the two things that I really love, helping people get better in terms of physical function and helping people play video games. Um, mm which the really great thing about being a gamer who is also a pt is that i'm not coming to this from like a complete place of ignorance um yes i may not play tekken as much but any game that i treat people in i've at least touched i've at least mm -hmm. tried it i might be really bad at it but i tried it <laughs> it's um, all good <laughs> which is, it's it's really helpful to know as a pt what kind of things are the people I'm treating potentially going through? What kind of things are they dealing with? What are the kind of strains and stresses that go on for their bodies? Which is a thing that a physical therapist should be able to do for, for really anybody they're treating. Um, but it's definitely been really great to have kind of that understanding of why a gamer might not want to see a PT and then understanding as a PT how I could kind of meet somebody where they're at. And mm -hmm. I meet people at a variety of stages. I meet people like you and like Pichan and <laughs> who are like, you know, people who do lifting and have sports and exercise backgrounds, which is awesome. Um, and that means I can kind of just like give you a little boost and not have to push much further. Mm -hmm. um, and then I meet people who really aren't quite as familiar with, you know, how what they're doing is affecting their body or how uh, they could be changing things up during their breaks, during their warm ups, during their cool downs. Um, how all of those little kind of rituals and routines affect their mindset and their ability to play. Um, and then I get to provide them with, you know, the education that gets them to where they need to be, as well as the, the kind of physical cueing that helps them get there. Um, so it's really rewarding. Um, it's really fun. And it means that I get to be super creative um, because I need to be able to design for people you know, stuff that they can do, not only to treat injuries, which is kind of where I was when I started, but also mm -hmm. design them things that boost their performance. And it has to be something that's flexible. It has to be something they could do at home, you know, when it's, you know, their bedroom and they've got plenty of space to do it in, or when they're at a tournament surrounded by folks with like no room to move, how do I help you get warmed up still? Um, and how do I make sure that the warm up that we're doing actually makes sense for the game that you play, the device that you play on, the style you play, um, even something as simple as like, uh, so in, in uh, Melee, for example, Super Smash Brothers, um, I probably wouldn't give, this, give the same warm up to say a Fox main as I would a Peach main because they're yeah, I totally get it. different. Yeah, I totally. Um, in terms of APM. And yeah. sure, there's, there's some general body structures that everybody's got to warm up before they're playing. You know, I want to get your blood pumping in general, get you that good, good full body oxygenation. And yeah, I want to make sure that your shoulders, your forearms, your wrists are feeling flexible. Uh, but I'm not necessarily going to be giving 
lots of stretches during a rest break to a peach bean because they're probably still pretty relaxed. They need something <laughs> to keep them kind of pumped up and focused. And for a fox bean, they're probably feeling a little bit more wound up and tight because good lord, that's a lot of APM. Yeah, so how yeah. do I get you to like calm down but still stay in that flow state? Um, so being able to kind of marry what I know being a gamer, what I know being a former traditional sports competitor, and what I know as a PT about human performance and how the body functions, mm-hmm. um, it's it surprisingly makes a lot of sense. It's it's one of those things that people are like, wait, PT and video games? Like, what do they need? Wrist therapy? And like, yeah, oh, it. So no, they don't all need wrist therapy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, actually a lot of people in the FGC do know about the, the kind of the role that their activities outside of gaming play on their ability to play. It's, you know, there's the whole fit FGC movement, which is pretty damn great. Um, there's a whole bunch of players who are also very much into the exercise and activity that they do. Um, and then there's just, there's a lot of receptiveness in the FGC um, to kind of like learning, learning any and everything that's going to make you a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Uh, because these are, they're, they're not always games that are, that are super new. I mean, there's, we can, we can put aside the argument as to whether or not Melee belongs under the, the FGC umbrella. Let's yeah, just say that they're close enough for related that we can talk yeah. about them together here. Um, you know, there is, there's a lot of room for education and there's a lot of receptiveness for that education. And these are games that have been out for a while, a good deal of the time. You know, these, you, you didn't just start playing Tekken last year. This is a game that's been out for quite some time. You've been playing it for ages. Um, <laughs> so sure, things change up. Sure, there's balance patches. But there's a lot of things that have already been discovered about the game, and people are getting to a point where they're like, okay, I want to discover more about the game, but like, are there things outside of the game that also boost my performance? Is it just, you know, I need to learn new tech? Or is there something else that I could be doing that'll also make me better? That Pretty was my monologue there. No, no, it was perfect. I guess uh, now I'm starting to see the correlation, which, you know, I, I hadn't in the beginning, but uh, eyes open wide now. I think this is something that I... I will, you know, try to share with my friends and and my buddies when we're whenever we're gaming. Awesome. Yeah, this is cool, cool yeah. insight. So yeah, no, again, so the stuff that I'm designing for you is very much going to be just kind of incorporate what you already know and use in a way that makes sense for your gaming. Um, kind of help you keep your performance at a high level. Um, and if at any point, like down the line, you do start dealing with pain, strain, anything like that, um, even once you're done with the Exo Academy stuff, feel free to hit me up. Totally fine. Um, cool. I'm here on Discord. You can always message me here. Nice. Um, and I will work on putting together basically some kind of like stretching lists um, and some warm up and cool down routines for you. And then from there, you're going to run with it. Mm-hmm. So we'll meet next week to go over those. And then you'll be golden. <laughs> nice. I'm excited. Right. Super excited. And if you think of any questions between now and then, again, feel free to send them along. Okay. One more question. Go I'm curious. It. Uh, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm in the medical, you know, I'm studying, so I have to know, has there been any like severe injuries that you've encountered, like with gamers? I'm not even talking like wrist injuries, something like, like, I don't know, back or, or just like muscle strain, anything like that. Cause that, I've always wondered if, uh, there is like severe injuries that come to prolonged gaming. There's, so there's a reason that we hear about the really severe injuries when they happen in pro players. Mm-hmm. It's because they're the exception, not the rule. Um, mm. And it's 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 kind of in for the same reason. Um, we, we see very few injuries in top players for the same reason that we see relatively few injuries compared to the, the compared to the total number of people who play pro sports. We hear about their injuries because again, they're not necessarily like the the norm. Um, mm-hmm. And by that, I don't mean that, you know, nobody ever gets injured in the NFL, but those big catastrophic injuries, we hear about them because they're not the thing that happens every single game. This is true. Um, the, the kinds of people who make it to the top tier of their sport, whether it's traditional or esport, are the kinds of people whose bodies are capable of adapting um, and or the kinds of people who learn what it takes for their body to adapt. Uh, there are some people who are genetically gifted and their bodies are just going to adapt and recover faster than others. And I'm looking at you, Saquon Barkley. Um, And there are some people whose bodies don't necessarily recover and adapt all that much faster than anybody else's, but they work their asses off um, and they learn kind of what they need to do to train to get to that level. Um, So that's the kind of thing that 
also translates pretty well um, to gaming. Um, we see we see a small number of players who get really big notice for the severe, severe injuries they have. And I'm thinking most recently, um, Uzi having to retire and yeah, Hacks yeah. With his kind of whole journey. Um, there is there's a whole lot that goes into getting to that point of a severe injury. Most and uh, like the vast majority, 99% or above of injuries that we see in gaming are chronic. Uh, and I'll cut that number down. We'll say 95. Most okay. injuries that we see are chronic. And yeah. the reason that most injuries we see are chronic aren't because there are never acute injuries, but because so many gamers um, are just ignoring pain because they're like, ah, this is expected. I'm grinding. It's, good. it's just going to happen. This is, you know, I, I, I earned this. You know, this, <laughs> I worked for this pain. Um, I've got someone I'm working with right now who's been having pain for about two weeks and came to me about that. Um, and it looks like the reason they're having that pain is they changed their mouse, um, which doesn't mean that they're going to end up with a chronic injury forever. It just means, okay, we train you up to the, the change of the mouse that you're having. We make sure we build up strength and endurance in your forearm and you're able to use whatever mouse you want to. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas a lot of the injuries that we used to and even still do see are the kinds of things that have gone on so long that they've become chronic. We're no longer in that two weeks out from injury, this is super easy to address phase. We're instead in the two to three years out from injury where your body has uh, developed something called central nervous system centralization or sensitization, mm-hmm. um, which is your body becomes more sensitive to the kinds of uh, signals that indicate pain or tissue damage over time uh, because bodies are annoying that way. Um, <laughs> uh, but for the most part, the injuries we see, again, are fairly chronic. They're things like tendinopathy issues, so damage to a tendon. Um, they are sometimes arthritis-related, uh, but a lot of times they're just they're positioning, posture, and kind of endurance-related, which means, I mean, the, the kind of sad part about those injuries when they get that severe is most of them, if not all of them, are preventable. Exactly. Um, so a lot of what I've been doing over the last five, five years in gaming now is education, because it kind of started out and it's been really, I've been really lucky. The the point at which I joined gaming um, and started working doing like medical care and performance related care in gaming, a lot of the kind of thought around PT and medical care was, oh, okay, we use you when we need to treat an injury. Um, and then with education, with time, with the continued growth of, of the industry, people were like, wait a second, we could prevent these injuries. Uh, yeah. like, let's, let's talk to you before we have injuries and we can prevent them. And now we're shifting to this point where it's not just talking about, let's talk to PTs or kinesiologists or exercise scientists, you know, a whole diverse field of folks. Let's talk to you to prevent injuries, but it's also, let's talk to you to boost our performance. People are recognizing the role that activity, sleep, nutrition, hydration all play, not just in injury recovery and prevention, but also in performance boosting. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I mean that in the good way, not in the like, you know, injections with PRP or, you know, (laughs) boosting kind of ways. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So that's been the, that's kind of been the shift in the industry over time. Um, there have definitely been the notable standout, really severe injuries. Um, but again, most of them were preventable. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, that's a lot, but I, I completely understand. Cause, um, I, a lot of people don't really, you know, they ignore the signs and get to a point where the signs can no longer be ignored. And it's like, how do you, how do you recover from that? All those years of just like, you know, grinding and not focusing on what your body is just begging for. So I don't want to get to that point. I'm I'm feeling good. I feel good. Mine's okay. So it's just something to, you know, constantly be aware of. Again, I think you're coming from a really good spot with like traditional sports and your background and exercise in that you've learned to listen to your body. And that's one of the Mm -hmm. most important things that you can do as an athlete or as a gamer is understanding what your body is asking of you. Um, and, and kind of what it needs in order to do the things that you want it to do. Um, that's that's a huge part, not only of injury prevention and of performance boosting, but just like functioning as a decent human being um, <laughs> and like not falling apart at the seams. Um, because the, the more you're able to pay attention to those things, the more you're able to, to recognize them, the less likely it is that you're going to develop something that's going to be that chronic, long-lasting, really severe kind of issue. Um, there's a whole host of like preventive healthy behaviors that people can engage in. Body awareness is definitely one of them. Um, getting, you know, their annual physical is another one. Um, even, even when you've got really great body awareness, there are things that you're going to miss that a professional isn't. So knowing where to go when you need to go somewhere is also hugely important. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. All right. 
Um, I am amazed that my cat did not make an appearance on this video call. This is a rare thing for her. She usually likes to be the center of attention. She'll probably show up next week, though. So don't okay, worry about cool. that. Okay, cool. I'll be ready. All right, and I will see you next week, same time, and good luck on your streams tonight. Thank you.